is designed for times and seasons. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 and 2. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born. And a time to die. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up that which is planted. When you understand the seasons and accept responsibility to utilize the seasons, life becomes productive. So the message is accept responsibility. But when you miss out, it becomes frustrating. So I will not miss out. Say like a child of God. I will not miss out. Life is not a matter of luck. The light you possess determines how far you go. It is light that guarantees flight. Now hear me, people of God. You are totally responsible for the affairs of your life. How far you go in life this year is your responsibility. The future of your life is created today and not in the future. The future you want to become tomorrow will not be created tomorrow. It will be created today. The future of your life is not in the future. It's in today. What you make out of today will determine what you become tomorrow. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And I pray that you will not miss it. Let me say this to you. No man will arrive at the future he has not prepared for. And no man will live where he is until he decides where he wants to be in life. You can't take a successful journey when you don't have a destination. You must know where you are going to before you even start the journey. Is that true? Nobody enters a transport and says, where are you going to? Is there anywhere you like? Drop me. That man will just miss his way. Is that not true? You enter a vehicle, you say, okay, where are you going to? He say, I don't have anywhere. Anywhere you arrive, drop me. You must know where you are going to. One of my domestic staff yesterday was making me to laugh. He said he entered and drove his car. He does not understand Padakot very well. So he just entered the road and began to drive. By the time he found himself, he was where he did not know how to come back home. Life took him. He said, journey of 30 minutes took him two hours plus. So he asked somebody, my friend, he said, can you drive me to salvation ministries? He said, ah, where you are is very far from salvation ministries. He said, he found himself in one of the rooms in Padakot. Life story. The wife was calling me, where are you, my husband? He said, I'm coming. He said he left 6 p.m. By 9, he was not home. That will tell you how far he has gone. Because he did not define his destination. He said, somebody, who pitied him and said, I'm a member of Salvation Ministries. Hold, I'll carry you. If I get you to Garrison, will you be able to find your way? He said, yes. He said, that's how the person directed him to Garrison, but God, when he got there, he said, I can know my way to Bradley Street. <laughs> that's how life is. If you don't define your destination from beginning, you may lose out of life. That will not be your portion. Yeah. The day you make a decision about your life is the day your world will change. Mm. 
Move decisively towards the goals you have established. Intolerance of your presence creates your future. If you are not satisfied with life now where you are, then you have a future. Then you have a what? Future. Now last year is gone. Forget the past things. Whatever happened last year, put it behind you. Put it what? Any mistake you made, put it behind you. In Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Hear what God said. Remember you know the former things, neither concern the things of old. So the things that have passed, put them behind you. Behold, I'll do what? Anything. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in desert. So forget whatever mistake you have made. Forget whatever was not working last year. Start a new life. And as you start this year with new decisions, may something good come out of your life. Amen. You are responsible for whatever will happen. Not your parents. Not the government of your country. Not your teachers as a student. Not your employers. Oh, if they can send me on a course. No, every man is responsible for his life. Your employer does not determine. No first class student is determined by his teacher. Every first class student is determined by his own input. You must accept responsibility to succeed this year and years ahead. And years what? What is responsibility? Responsibility is simply your ability to respond to the situations. To the what? Situations and challenges of life. Responsibility is your ability to respond to the situations and challenges of life. Your success is totally up to you. This year and beyond. He said this book of the law. Joshua 1 a, Shall not depart out of your mouth. You not God. But thou shalt meditate the there in day and night. Still you. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is there in. Still you. Then thou shalt make thy way what? And then thou shalt have good success. So your prosperity and success is not determined by God. It's determined by you and I. So here. God does not determine how far you will succeed. Now listen carefully. You determine how you succeed. Responsibility is a price you pay for success. You can never be great without embracing the law of responsibility. Nobody. And refusing to accept responsibility, you may end up a liability life. That will not be your portion. Responsibility also means to respond to the demands of life in line with the scriptures. That's what responsibility is. You are responding to the demands of what? Life in line with scriptures. So here. To attain success in life, you need to respond positively to the law of responsibility this year. So it means time for me to take charge of my life. I will not waste my life. Now, if you don't take charge, you waste it. Hear this and hear me well this year. Refuse going in cycles and conformity to mediocrity. This year. Because people going nowhere will give you foolish counsel on success. They can't help you. Don't let anyone put you down to his or her miserable level. Questions you must answer. Questions you must what? These are questions you must answer. You don't need to write exam. You answer them. Who is responsible for my life this year? What do I want to do with my life this year? This is a question you must answer. No, it's not something you just think. Who is responsible for my life this year? What must I do with my life this year? Hear this. You are responsible for your life, not God. Not who? You can't afford to live your life anyhow. Your decisions today will tell me your future tomorrow. Is somebody hearing what I'm going to say? 
So the quality of your decisions determines the color of your destination. Let me say this to you. Life can be classified into four seasons. Is there many seasons? Four seasons. You know, in the natural, we have autumn, spring, winter, summer. Is that true? So also, life has seasons. Life has what? Each season of your life must be fully utilized. No, I'm talking to everybody. Even the little children hear this message. Life is in four seasons. How many seasons? Everybody falls into these four seasons. Life has four seasons. Everybody. Listen carefully. I'm going to go deep. We have four seasons. We have what? Life can be classified into four seasons. Every season has a specific reason. The season you are now is very important for you to utilize it. Don't play down on any season. Don't play down on what? And now I'm going to look at the seasons of life. The first season number one is called childhood season. It is called what? This is the age of learning. It falls between 12 and 19. That's why in this church, once you are 12, you come to the adult church. People keep telling me, why, why would 12 years old children come to the adult church? I'll show you from the Bible. At 12, I think two years ago we took that decision. Is that true? Once you are 12, you move over to the adult church. We don't keep you in children's church anymore. I said, this one goes between 12 and what? 19. In Luke chapter 2, 42 to 51, hear what the Bible says here. And when he was 12 years old, who was that? They went up to Jesus after the custom of the feast. And when they have fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried in Jerusalem, and Joseph, his mother, knew not it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their king folks and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to where? Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three they found him where? At which age? So twelve children don't stay in children, children, they stay in the temple. As the father sent him, so he sent us. In the midst of who? Doctors. Both hearing and asking them what? So a 12 year old child cannot be kept in children's church. Why can he uh, one thing and be saying uh, A plus one, B plus one, they are past that level. He was hearing, asking questions. And if you watch our children, they hear more than most of you. When they get home, they tell you things that you'll be surprised. They say, Papa said, Papa said, Mommy, what are you talking? This is not what Papa said. They, they understand the world deeper than most of who you are at us. And all that I heard him, which means he was also speaking, we are tarnished as his understanding and answers. At which age? That's the time children learn. Good or bad, they learn it at that age. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, but let me show something to you. Chapter 2 of Luke. He said, and he said unto them, how is it that you sought me, which not that my mother, my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. But verse 51, and he went down with them. Shall we read together? 51 together. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother came on this. He was subject to them because he was still under their care. At that age, you are being cared for. Yes, he knew, but he was still under the parental control. Do you understand the meaning? This stage is the stage of dependency. Where parents still take control of the child. They are responsible for the child. They take care of the child. It is called the preparation phase. It is called what? Where the child prepares to become great. It is the preparation phase. And most of us have passed that level. But make your children know it. That is the stage where the child prepares. That's just, that's not what? Prepares to become whatever he wants to be. No one will miss it. Amen. The second season is called youthful season, number two. It is called what? It is the age of purpose and pursuit. It is the age of what? It falls between 20 and 29. 
This age falls between what? 20 and 29 years. Any age bracket you fall in, yeah, what belongs there? In Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28 and 29. Say unto them, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as he has spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Your carcass shall fall in this wilderness, and all that we are numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old, from how many years? And upward, which have murmured against me. This is the most important season. Once you are 20, any decision you take, you are responsible. You don't blame anybody. God said from 20 years up, I'm going to judge them. I'm not going to look them as children anymore. So when a child uses 20 years, you are no more a child. At that point, any decision you take, you don't blame anybody. You are responsible for your decisions from 20. You don't blame your parents. You don't say, I see what my mother did. He said from 20, I'm not leaving them alone. It is the core of colorful destiny. You are responsible for your actions once you hit 20. It is a season of decisions. This is not what? Where anything a child decides is done. 20. Up. Look at Numbers chapter 1. 3, 18 and 20. To tell how powerful it is. Numbers chapter 1, 3. Let's read it together. From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their what? 20 up. Let's read verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together from the first day. Go ahead. Second month. And they declared their what? Pentecost after their families by the house of their father according to the number of names from 20 years old upward by their pools. Read again. And what? Israel and their son by their generations after their families by the house of their father according to the number of what? By their pools. Every male for what? That we are able to go what? For, for what? From 20 years. You are no more a child. You hear me? This season is not the disco season. Sit down and make your season work by accepting responsibility. If you miss it, you miss it. While we are teaching some of us missed it. We are not born again. But you, if you miss it now, you don't blame the devil because you, we never had the privilege of hearing what you're hearing now. It, we, some of us missed it at this age. We are busy going to disco and we are lost. We are ruined. If you miss it, you don't have any excuse. Because you are a child of God. We are not born again when we are, when we are this age. I never went to church all my school days. I went to church only one day. Because it was composite that I must go to church as a student union leader. To, I don't even know what you are doing in church. They just want us in. I don't even know what you are doing. But you now have no excuse to fail because you are privileged to hear the word of God. This is not disco season. This is not the season of nine club. There's a season where you frame your life for a greater tomorrow. It's not a season you don't get about. It's not a season where a man wears a ring. It's not a season where you sack your trouser. It's a season where you decide on what to be in life. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? It's not a season where you say, hey, I'm a boy. Yo. No, it's a season of responsibility. Then the third season. It's called sonship season. It's called what? It is the season of exploits. Season of what? This season is 30 years and above. It is 30 years and what? Above first season. That is when men, names are made. This is the season when what? Men, Names are made. This is it. In Numbers chapter 4, 3, 23, 30. Shall we read together? From 30 years old.
old and what? Upward, even unto 50 years old. All that enter into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the what? Verse 23 together. From 30 years old and what? Upward until 50 years old shall thou number them. Is that true? All that enter into the perform the service to do the work of the tabernacle of creation. Look at the next one. Let's do together. I want to go again. From 30 years what? Even unto what? 50 years old shall thou what? Number them. Everyone that entered the service to do the work of the tabernacle in the congregation. Shout hallelujah. Your contribution to life is packaged at this season. It is the prime season. It is what? This is the prime season. Now, for instance, Joseph appeared before Pharaoh at 30. At what? It was 30 that Joseph became a prime minister. It's a very powerful season. In Genesis 41, 46, shall we read together? One to go. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of where? He became a prime minister at which age? 30. David became king at 30. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. Shall we read together 2 Samuel 5, 4? David was 30 years old when he began to walk and he reigned 40 years. Jesus. Sonship was declared at 30. Sonship was declared at what? That's why I call it the sonship season. Shall we read Luke chapter 3, 22, 23. One to go, Luke 3, 22, 23, to go. And the Holy Ghost descended in a body shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, we said, Thou art my word, indeed I am well word. And Jesus himself began to be about what? That is the age where you announce your word. Someone at that age will announce your word. Yeah. 30s, between 30 and 50, your world must hear about you. Between that time, 30 and 50. Your world must hear what? About you. And they will hear about you. Yeah. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Child who's season, your parents take care of you. Youthful season, you become responsible for everything you do. Sonship season, you are ready for an announcement. And then you enter the fourth season, which is the last season. It is called manhood season. It is called what? It is the season of dominion. It is when you become an authority in your field. In the season of harvest and celebration. That the age of positive returns based on the other seasons you have maximized. Do you understand what I'm saying now? In the season of harvest and what? Celebration. The age of positive what? Returns based on the other seasons. You have, you have maximized seasons that at that time you are just, you are just, you are just saying, oh, good things are going to happen now. Shout Hallelujah. In Psalm 92, verse 14, the people, they shall be fat and what? Flourishing. They shall still bring forth fruit, even in old age. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 22b, for as the days of a tree are the days of my people, my illness shall long enjoy the work of what? Yes. Please hear this. Discover where you belong now. And discover where you are here on earth and give it all it takes. Take responsibility of the seasons of your life as to enjoy dignity and nobility. Do you know what happens when you do that same responsibility? Can I tell you what happens? You become a victim. You become unrealistic and start trading blames. When you don't take responsibility, because what? Unrealistic, and you start trading 
blames. You are controlled at that point by other people's opinion. You no longer advance in life. You no longer grow in life. No more growth when you, are, when you don't accept responsibility for those other seasons. So how to embrace responsibility? How to embrace what? Now you have to embrace responsibility. How to embrace responsibility? Because you don't have to just play with life anyhow. How to embrace responsibility? I'm sure somebody hearing this message, your life will turn after today. Yeah. How? Now this is a practical teaching I'm telling you how to embrace what? How to embrace responsibility. Number one, stop making excuses. Stop what? Stop making excuses. If you want to explain, just don't, you know, it's even not for this, all those are nonsense. Let me show you something. This morning, early hours, I had to wake up to study again. And in my studies, I've read that scripture, but I had to go down. And the Holy Ghost said, move foot on. And he opened my eyes to a deep something. In Luke 14, I'm going to read 17 down to 24. I've always stopped at 20. I've read it, but the Holy Ghost gave me. Look at what the Bible said here. Shall we read 17 together? I want to go. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that are bidden, come for all things are now what? God said, you come. Everything that will make you great is ready. There's nothing that will make you a star. That is not what? Ready. But look at the next verse. And they all, with one concept, began to make excuse. And that's the nature of an average person. Excuses. If not for this. If not for this. There will always be a reason not to do something. If you want to find an excuse. God said everything is ready to make you great. To make you what? But he said all of them began to, an, an average person will always give excuse, if not for my background, if not for my children, if not that I'm a single mother, if not that you can always have an excuse. You tell yourself no more. No more excuses. Because if you want to find an excuse, there is always a reason to give. But those who want to be great, they don't look for an excuse. They accept responsibility. They accept what? Because your kind of condition, someone has passed through it, we made it in the midst of that. You are not the first. If you are a single mother, there are single mothers of five children who became great. Don't tell me with two children you are not having excuses. There are people who you say, I don't have parents. There are people, their parents died when they were small and they became great. Everybody must have had somebody like you who has made it. But if you want to find an excuse, you always find an excuse. The first said, unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. And I must needs go and see it. I pray to have me what? Another said, you see all of them? I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray to have me what? Each one was giving a reason. Another said, I have married a wife. <laughs> Therefore, I cannot what? At that time, the master was angry. When you give an excuse, God gets angry with you. That's what God told me. He said, every time you excuse me, he gets grieved. He said, I have made this ready for you. Tell me no rubbish are you talking about. God gets grieved when he begins to give excuse. So the servant came and showed his Lord this things. And the master of the house being angry. Do you hear that? God gets angry when you begin to give excuse. Said unto his servant, go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city. I'm bringing, I'm going to bring something out. He that the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. Go ahead, down to 24. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto his servant, Go out into the highways and edges and compel them to come, that my house may be what? Filled. And I say unto thee, this is where the Holy Ghost opened my eyes, that none of those men which we are beating shall taste my supper. That's when you're a child of God born again, give excuse, you will be surprised a new believer who they just bring from Egypt will break through before you. All old believers, God said, I drop you, the one who came from outside and said, I'm robber, who believes my word, I lift him up. That's when see people come from bad, bad boys who come to church and then, boop, they break through and say, but I've been here since because you're busy giving excuses. Someone like me, I came from Egypt. When I accepted Christ, I refused to give any excuses. I said, God, I take it raw. I came to Christ at a matured age. At a matured what? I became born again at 33. 
I was already a man. And I took the word of God by storm. And I told myself, whatever God says, I will take it. Most of you have been in this church, even in this church, old. Every time, you know, if not for my children. What do you want to do? So God is not bad to give you children. You know, if not for my background. Stop giving those stupid excuses. When you make excuses, you extinguish your future. We hear what God said, Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Shall we read together? I'm sure somebody's taking a decision now. This message is not for you to just get excited. It's for you to take decisions. Now, read this. One, two, go. The A part, everybody. Therefore, thou art what? Oh man, stop there. Tell your neighbor, no excuse. This is about, read it, put it again on screen. Therefore, thou art what? Read it, oh man, you are not, no excuse. You are not the first. If not for my children, you know, now you know you're born. Gloria Copra in her book says she was carrying a baby, carrying one at the back when she wrote her books. That she was carrying a baby at the back. In those days, nobody like has, where, has help in the Western world. Where do you have the money to get the house help? She was with her baby at the back when she wrote God's Swiss Prosperity. And I took the whole world by storm. She was, she was writing. They were going for cross-country crusades with a baby at the back. With a baby what? One in hand, one at the back. This one now, you have two. You have three housemates. You are still complaining. You are still what? Still complaining. You are not the one beating them. You are not the one wearing them clothes. You are not the one even brushing their mouth. Yet you are still complaining. Laziness. Wake up! If, if you are in this assembly, don't wake up this year. You tell me whether the devil is your problem. Say no more excuse. Tell your neighbor no more excuse. Your excuse is not accepted. Stop giving any excuse. Number two. How to embrace this? I want you to. I want to succeed. I want to what? One word change me. One. Word. If you want to change, you will take the truth. Oh. One day, before anybody just came to our class, I went Bible school. Say, hear this. You can never be a great pastor running from Shumulu to Baraga. Sit down at the assignment. That's how you become great. It struck me boom, where I was sitting. And I love to drive. I love. It. I like to drive. I just get up, enter my car. Drive from Victoria Island to Ikeja. Ikeja, you know, as a young man, you are not married, you know, with that kind of life, just drive. You get to anywhere, the way where I was not born again. You get there, you just put your toothbrush, sleep there, get up again and move again. Oh, some of you do it before you even know that you're born again. You understand what I'm saying? Where do you sleep? You know where you slept? Do you sleep in your fellow friend's house? No way. You know where you slept? And just move and then get up again. My neighbors never knew me for months. They only hear the gate will, will hit by 11 p.m., by 4 a.m., I'm off again. One day the student said, who is this young man living in this flat? So when I came, I said, are you the one? We only see your car. We don't know your face. Think I just jump here? So I'm telling you the truth. Oh. So I told myself, oh boy, no movement. Sit down at your walk. That the man you are seeing sitting down at my walk, I was not like that. Oh. I used to move. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now, even if you tell me to move, I, I, I get so tired to move where? Move to where? Everybody can change if you want to change. Number two, how to embrace responsibility. Do not procrastinate. Do not what? Do not procrastinate. In John chapter 13, verse 27, the people, he said, Jesus said unto him, That 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 doest, do what? Quickly. Anything you are doing, do it what? You may see it from the negative side, but it has the positive side. Anything you want to do, do quickly. He told Judah, I said, don't waste time. I'm a purpose here. Finish your assignment. Don't take it from that side. Anything you want to do, do what? Stop procrastinating. So I say tomorrow. So I say tomorrow. So I say tomorrow. I want to take a new year's decision. Take the decision now. I was talking to one of my staff. He said, the new year. I said, why will you wait for new year? Do it now as I'm talking to you. Why do you say new year? New year didn't bring anything. Will your teeth change in the new year? So what you want to do today? Say, I want to do it for next year. What are you talking about? Do it now. Tell them, do it now. <laughs> now, now, now. <laughs> Procrastination, they say, is a lazy man's apology. Procrastination can become a full-time occupation. This is a new decade. Now, let me say this to you. How old are you? Stop saying I am plus one. Those are nonsense. 
you are not plus one. You know your age. Stop saying that. Not that self deceit. I'm plus one. What is plus one? You are forty five. You are forty five. And start saying, how oh, I can I'm plus one. What is plus one? Plus one. When you say, oh, yes, someone say plus one, he has deceived himself. You are not plus one. You are 45. I know my age. I'm 57. What is plus one? What is plus one? <laughs> that is all self deceit. Say what? You know your age. Don't deceive us. Even if you reduce it, don't you know your age? That you went to school, they brought down five years out of it. Does it make it? You know your age. You know, don't you know your age? Your younger brother is older than you now. <laughs> I'm plus one. What is plus one? This one has a responsibility. At this point of your life, accept what? Not like plus one. What is plus one? So you add value to your life and become productive. You will never remain on earth forever. Don't deceive yourself. You will never remain on earth for. And so, do that which God has laid in your heart and do it quickly. Do it what? Do it quickly. I sat down last year and I took a prison. And I told myself some raw truth. This year I had three outstanding things that must be accomplished. And I gave them dates. I gave each one. From last year I said, this must be done. This must be done. This, this must be done. I said, God, these three things must have dates. So I fixed it. If it's before, I would have said seven services anytime. I said January 26th, we fixed it. I fixed it for the university, fixed it for the cathedral. Not like we will just get together. I fixed the exact date for the dedication of the cathedral. So that everybody's head will be correct. Both in Genial, everybody, we all know this is the date, no going back. Because, you know why? I, I had to sit down to ask myself for the university. I need strength in spite of the mental to run the university for the next five years. And if I'm 57, then I means I have to use part of my strength, early 60s. So I can't be waiting till I get to the 60s to start running it. Because as in spite of your mental stress, you have to physically look at the university, how the students are behaving. So I won't deceive myself to not think that I will reduce my age. So I just some of you, some of you do. Will I not say I'm 50? He's 57. What? Stop deceiving yourself. Number three. Make reasonable plans. Make what? How to embrace responsibility. Make reasonable plans. Set achievable goals this year and pursue the goals. Don't push off everything to God. I know God will do it when you don't have a plan is for those who are not wise. Sit down and strategize this year. God will do nothing if you don't plan and pursue it. God won't dedicate cathedral if we don't give it a date. He will back us with grace, but we have to build it. Then he will help us. God will do nothing about Pesach University if I do nothing. God will do nothing about the seven services if now I don't plan and pursue it. Enabling grace comes from him, but you have to do your path. Just imagine, I know God will make us do seven services without we sitting down to plan how we do the seven services. We took time, we held meetings, we fasted, we prayed for the seven services. That God cannot do for us. Are you getting what I'm saying now? We plan how the youth service will look like. We plan how the business service will look like. We plan how the message will look like. We plan youth service for the next two months. We have the topics for two months. That will God do for us? We have the topics for the next two months for the youth service. How each topic, how the youth will hear it and then to explode and our youth take over the world. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Will God do that part for us? No way. God won't do that part for us. I know God will do it. I'm believing God. Believe in the word. God will now lead for you at the age of 19 to pass as I'm. Thank you. If they lay hands on you, will the book enter your head? He said, whosoever hear this sense of mine and what? It's like not a word. It's not whatever is this sense of mind and talk at them. Matthew 7 24. So when you hear, do. Talk and do. Permit me. Talk and what? They say talk and I do. Talk and. And finally, number four. Be focused. 
Be what? Be focused. This year you must be focused. Now listen, I have three outstanding things. So let me tell you this. This year focus on something. It will make you not to be distracted. Now anything that wants to take me off those three things, I will not agree. I have the university, I have the seven services, I have the cathedral. They are before me. So if you want to bring anything outside that, I'll, I'll come back and say, hey, 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 don't take me. Every of my things is revolving around those things. So this year be focused. Set a target. This year I must do my MBA. Set a target. This year I must start my company. Set a target. Don't say anytime. Set a target when the company will start. And say by March my business will start. By March I must have read 50 books. I must write this particular book I'm planning to write. By March my book must be published in Harvard. Set a target. If that way nobody can move you. You understand now? I set a target for the three things. We're for the first one, you know, 26, we are selling seven services. Now, if you want to move me out of 26, first, I won't be moved because already I've known that 26th of January, we are selling seven what? So, you can't carry me away. I have a target for the university to start. I have a target for the candidate to be dedicated. Exact date. Not that I don't. So, you two put a date for your business, for goodness sake. That way you can't be carried away left and right. Fix a date by March. So, so time, my business will take off. Not any time God provides. Unfocused people live like locust. Focus on the tax ahead. On the tax what? By this time, I'm through with my PAD. Be disciplined to that which you have said. Be diligent. Give it all it takes. This is not a year for Joko. Be willing to go the extra mile. Be driven by excellence. That look, I must excel. I'm not here for mediocrity. Is that clear, sir? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must finish my fashion school in three months and I must open my business in the next six months. It's not money. You can start with one machine. Is that true, sir? Let me say this to you. Refuse rewards until you are true with any given assignment. Don't go for money first. Go for excellence. Go for what? Any job given to you, first finish it. Don't go for money first. Remove rewards. Remove what? Until you are true with any assignment or job. Until you are done with the job, don't be going for money, 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 money. You won't excel at that. First go for you doing a good thing that will attract everybody to you. So here. 